what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. And it's been a long time since I've been able to come out here and talk about a new offering from Jack Wolf Knives. And that's because they took a little bit of a break in their production for one month. So there was no drop last month. One of the most exciting things for me personally is to get a shipping notice on a Jack Wolf Knives inbound and once again giddy like a little child as soon as I got that shipping notice that this was going to be on the way to me and I happened to choose the uh, the nebula pattern of the fat carbon mainly because I love how bright and crisp and fresh and clean it looks. The other reason is I've already ordered the uh, second run of the Kaladins and um, on one of them I'm going to have the same look in that knife. And I really wanted to have a matching set very, very badly. Because every single day, no matter what my primary knife carry is, I always have a Jack Wolf slip joint in my pocket, no matter what. And I tend to use it more than almost any other knife in my collection. Just because there, it's just it's so wonderful to, to hear it and feel it. And this crazy, crazy thin hollow grind that they put on these things really does the job. I don't care what the hell you're cutting. This is going to do it very well. As a matter of fact, um, this is the second time I'm doing this intro because as I was filming the original intro, I cut the living hell out of my finger and started blood started going everywhere. And I really didn't want to subject you guys to that. So let's go ahead and get into the brand new offering the Big Bro Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. We're going to get into some photography and then into the tabletop review. We'll do the TLDW. We'll do the specs. And I'll give you my opinions on why this one feels quite a bit different than all of the others that I own and love and carry all of the time. And why I think this one is probably going to end up being one of the most carried out of all the slip joints that I have. All right, boys and girls, here we go. This is the brand new Big Bro Jack, and take a look at that fat carbon nebula. Look how gorgeous that is. Red, white, blue, and then the black background of the carbon fiber. Really, really good looking. And I think my favorite part of the whole knife really is the overall design because of having the clip point on there. Now, as I mentioned, it's probably one of the most unique looks out of all the Jack Wolfs I've got, except for the Cyborg. The Cyborg is always, I think, going to be the most unique because that was uh, Ben's original design and wasn't really based on a traditional pattern. It was very much a, a modern design. Grab the Havelina here. And the reason why I said in the intro that I think this might end up being the one that I carry the most is because early on, the one I carried the most was the design that I love the most, which is the Cyborg. And I do still, I, it's still my favorite. I think it is just wild and cool and aggressive looking. And the clip point here is going to give me the same feeling of aggression in the blade profile that I like. Um, but as I was saying, I, while the Cyborg is my clear favorite in the overall design, 
The one that I tend to carry the most these days is actually the Vampire Jack. It's a, it feels a little bit bigger in the hand. Even though, if you take a look, there's almost no size difference at all between the Vampire and the Big Bro. However, the Big Bro looks smaller when you're just looking at it. And it certainly doesn't feel very large in the hand. So it's really, it's really weird. It's really tricky how the very slightest differences in the sizes can translate to something entirely different. Here is the Havelina right up next to it. And the Havelina feels very, very compact like the Cyborg does. A little more so, but... Um, Definitely feels more compact. This is going to give me pretty much everything I want size-wise. It's going to be just a little bit bigger than the Cyborg, a little bit smaller than the Vampire, and so it's going to give me the balance of very, very easy to carry, along with still being big enough where I feel like I've got a good full grip on it, and I've got a full utility size blade to do any kind of cutting that I feel that I need to do. Let's take a look back here. This is something that's very, very important. S90V. Now, while I absolutely love M390, and I still think it is one of the best all-around steels for an EDC knife, a lot of people are tired of hearing M390, M390, M390 on everything that comes out now. So what Ben decided to do was spend a little bit extra and upgrade into S90V. So now... On the last, I think, four, all of the last, ever since the low drag, they've all been S90V. So what you've got is a blade steel that's going to hold an edge for a good long time. And you're hardly ever going to have to strop or resharpen it. And that's going to be very important for a lot of people. And I can attest to the fact that the heat treat is really good because I use my Jack Wolf knives more than pretty much any, everything that I have for actual real cutting, cutting down cardboard and cutting into packages and cutting rope and all kinds of shit. I tend to use my slip joints now more than anything else. And I have not had any of my Jack Wolves yet that have started to feel like they're getting a little bit dull or it's laborious in some way to make a simple cut. So they're doing a fantastic job all the way around. Now, as with all Jack Wolf knives, your back spring here is going to be perfectly flush in all three positions. Closed, half stop, and open. It is perfectly flush. Done very, very well. Nice finish work throughout. Deep, deep, really dramatic hollow grind. And very dramatic on that, uh, that clip as well. That clip point looks so fantastic. There we go. Look at that. Woo! That's a sexy beast right there. I love that colorway. It's just so damn perfect. And again, as I mentioned before, the packaging really is part of the experience. For the most part, we don't care what our packaging is for the knives that we get because they tend to go into a closet or a Tupperware bin or something and not pulled out again until we sell or trade those knives. It's a great experience when you first unbox your new knife and you've got cool packaging. It really starts to, to set in how much the designer cares about the overall experience of owning the knife. But at the end of the day, it's not the most important thing. But when it comes to the, the, uh, the Jack Wolf knives, it's such an integral part of the experience of owning the knife that I'm so glad that he puts the time and the cost into doing all of this. And I'm glad that he has made the decision to start producing a lot more extra stickers. Because here's the thing, when you go to sell or trade these knives... The new, the buyer is going to want all their packaging intact. 
So I don't know anybody personally that has said that they've been using their stickers. I know I haven't. Stickers have been going back into the tin along with the pog and the cloth so that it's all together. I don't have any expectation of ever trading or selling mine because I am so unbelievably addicted to them and I, I want to always have them. But at some point, you never know what's going to happen. If somebody says, hey, man, I'll give you 10 times what that knife was ever worth. I don't know what accent that was or why I even went there. But I want to keep all my packaging pristine. But he's going to be offering all of the stickers uh, as additional accessories that you could purchase off the website soon so that we can actually start putting our stickers on things that we like to put stickers on, our toolboxes and stuff like that. Have a whole collection of the, uh, the Jack Wolf stickers all over everything. This is normally the part where I would do the TLDW and break down the pros and the cons. But it's a Jack Wolf. There really are no cons. Everything, <laughs> everything is a pro. So we'll forego that. Get all this stuff out of the way. And we'll get into the specs. And then all of my personal thoughts on the knife, why I think it's great, why I think everybody should have one. And here we go. Now, the release date on these. April 14th at 11 a.m. Pacific, which is 2 p.m. Eastern, at all of the dealers listed on the Jack Wolf Knives website. They don't sell direct on the website. They only sell through authorized dealers. Now, your pattern is a sleeve board, and the whole idea behind that is the fact that you're going from a narrow bolster, straight bodied, tapers out to this round butt here, which is similar to the look of the sleeve board of an ironing board so that you can iron out the sleeves on a shirt. That is, as I understand it, where the pattern name comes from. The covers on my particular knife are the Fat Carbon Nebula. And honestly, there is not a single bad choice in all of the variations that are being offered on this. One thing to note, uh, Ben did bring this up. This will be the last knife until further notice that will feature any Micarta variations. From this point forward, unless something changes... Everything is going to be a variation of carbon fiber or other materials, but not micarta. And I could not be happier. As much as I thoroughly despise micarta, personally, the look of it, the feel of it, everything, it looks like a lot of people that are ordering from him tend to feel the same way, and they gravitate toward these special carbon fiber variations much more quickly than they do with the micartas. All right, so let's see here. You've got 6AL4V B-blasted titanium for the frame. Your hardware is all polished titanium Torx. And you have S90V steel that is deeply hollow ground. Close length 3.9 inches, blade length 2.98 inches. The edge is going to be 2.63 inches. Blade stock is 120 thou. And your weight is only 2.6 ounces. Now, they are running the S90V at 61 Rockwell. So, 61 and 62 is really where a lot of people really want to be for an EDC knife on S90V. It's still going to be a challenge to resharpen. S90V is not the easiest steel to resharpen if it's been heat treated properly. It'll hold its edge for a very long time, but servicing that edge is not as easy as, say, CPM 154, S35VN, something like that. This is going to be, it's going to take a little bit longer to, for you to work up that burr. And that's pretty much it for the specs. Now let's talk about why I think this is another absolute home run. Look how gorgeous that belt satin is. How aggressive that uh, clip point is. I love the fact that he went ahead and added the swedge in there as well because that really adds an extra bit of depth and dimension to that look. 
Everything as you would expect is fitted perfectly. Everything is perfectly matched. You don't feel the transition from the titanium to the carbon fiber. The back spring sits nice and flush in all three positions, as I mentioned earlier. What a great job. I just, I am so massively in love with this brand and with these knives. There's almost nothing that I would change. Almost nothing. I love the fact that they're $300. It's a good medium price point. It's not so cheap where you worry and go, oh, what's the quality going to be like? I mean, because if it was like a $180, you'd be like, oh man, I got to, I got to really worry about the quality that I'm getting, especially on your first purchase. And if it was, you know, $350, $375, $400, a lot of people would go, you know what, for that money, I'm going to stick with my primary folders and flippers and and all that. I don't really need to get into the slip joint game at at $400. So at $300, I think is a fair price point for what you're getting in the materials, in the craftsmanship, in the quality of the steel, all the accessories that you're getting with it. And, and, And you do have to factor that in, at least I do. That slip, to me, is a huge incentive to make your first leap into a good quality slip joint. Because with, uh, with several brands out there, you'll spend however much money you're going to spend on the knife, and then you've got to find somebody that can make you a good quality slip that isn't too big or too small, that fits the knife properly, that you feel protects it the way that you want it protected, and you could be spending $40, $50, $60, dollars maybe more if you're getting into some really exotic hides. And it's all included. It's all one inclusive package. And I love that. I still think it's such a great idea the way that he's doing this. Now, for those that are, you know, big Jack Wolf collectors, what's going to happen is you're going to have a whole bunch of these laying around the house. You're, I mean, oh my goodness. Because, again, you really shouldn't be storing your knives in leather for any long periods of time. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but if you live in a humid environment um, or you've used the knife and it's maybe damp or moist at some area on the blade, putting it inside of the slip, you're going to be holding that moisture in there, trapping it in there, and it's just going to be sitting in there moist. And at some point, you'll get rust and corrosion. So yeah, you're going to have your knives wherever you have your knives, and you're going to have a whole bunch of these laying around. But I still think it's important that it gets included with each and every single knife because there are a lot of people that are going to go, well, you know what, if if I've got the whole package all at once for one price, it's a much bigger incentive for me to go ahead and make the leap into a slip joint. I know it sure as hell made me happy when I opened up the first 10 and went, it's got everything I need. Perfect. So there you have it. That is the Big Bro Jack, the newest offering for, what is this, April? It is April of 2023. And on the 14th is the the day that they're going to be dropping. A whole bunch of dealers are going to have them. But don't wait. I mean, you really want to be there on drop day, probably within the drop hour, so that you're able to select the exact combination that you want. Because I have watched these things sell out so incredibly fast on the really popular versions. Like, oh my God, if you wanted a low drag, if you wanted the 80s carbon fiber and the low drag, Man, if, if you weren't there immediately, you were not going to get it. And right now, that's the one that everybody wants on the secondary market. And the same thing goes for the, the vampire. If, if you have a vampire in the red lava flow, secondary market goes nuts for the red lava flow in the vampire. So getting in there right away as soon as they drop will assure you of getting the version that you want and not having to sell a kidney a a few weeks later to to hopefully get one from somebody else in the Facebook group. But there are no bad choices in this drop. I mean, yeah, I I despise Micarta, and there's a couple Micarta choices. But as far as the carbon fibers go, every single one of those look amazing. 
And you guys know I have a particular affinity for the Sunset Orange. That's going to be an option on this model. And it was hard for me personally to go, do I forego Sunset Orange to go into this gorgeous nebula? But yeah, I, I had to do it. And I haven't sat down to do the photography that you have already seen at the beginning of the video yet. So I don't know how it photographs yet. But I'm thinking it's going to be a lot easier to photograph that the, especially the white is really going to come popping out of there. So I'm actually going to stop things right where I'm at so I can sit down and do the photography. I'm actually really excited about shooting this and uh, seeing how it all comes out because there's like as gorgeous as this is in person, the hues of the red and blue, because they're so subtle, were really, really difficult to photograph. Whereas I think this one is just going to pop against any background in any lighting. So off I go to do that, and I'll see you guys on the next video.